The future of surveillance is hiding in plain sight at the Baja Beach Club in Rotterdam, Holland. This may look like a regular party, but it's no normal club. The Baja has an elite group of special VIPs who are different from other clients. They need no identification and no cash to buy drinks or food. To enter the club, all they have to do is offer up an arm to a scanner. And tonight, 21-year-old Ryoni Shuten will be joining the in crowd. I just do it because it's more comfortable. They will bring you the drinks and food instead of uh, you going to the bar to get it. But before he can party, Rayoni has a doctor's appointment. He's getting an electronic chip implanted in his arm. It's called radio frequency identification. An RFID chip is a small device that transmits a radio signal that's read by a scanner. In 2003, the Attorney General of Mexico and some of his staff received RFID implants inside their bodies to allow them access to sensitive areas. While it's not yet commonplace, Rayoni's doctor has implanted nearly 100 chips. At first I have some doubt, of course, because you uh, are putting chips in healthy, pe healthy young people. But um, I think it's, it's the future. Each tiny chip has a number. A scanner connected to a database can instantly reveal who the person is and much more. Technically, there's no limit to the information the database can hold. This is the needle with which I'm going to implant the chip. The chip itself is a little larger than a grain of rice. It will remain inside Rayoni's body for the rest of his life or until he undergoes surgery to have it removed. Rayoni will need an anesthetic before the procedure. The chip is implanted just millimeters below the skin. If it goes in too close to the muscle, the muscle could be damaged and Rayoni will feel the chip when he moves. If all goes well, he won't even know it's there. is over in seconds and now it's time to party although others have to pay cash at the entrance when Rayoni arrives his name and number instantly identify him as a VIP member of the club he makes his way to the VIP deck and uses his implant to buy a drink Baja is a glimpse of a not-so-distant future. Already, some people have chips with critical health information. Some think that soon everyone will have a chip that will identify them and allow a new form of surveillance. Joe Van Gallen manages the club and likes to keep an eye on everyone, especially his chipped VIPs. I think that in uh, 20 years, uh, it, it will be a normal thing. I think when you get born, you get a chip, and uh, it will stay in your body for the rest of your life, and you get all kind of information on it. So if you got a problem, you read the chip, and then they know who you are. Implanted ID chips may be just the beginning. Future chips could be coupled with GPS tracking technology, making it possible to locate anyone, anytime, anywhere. Parents and pet owners are already using external GPS units to keep track of their loved ones. In the U.S., approximately 7,500 criminals are monitored by GPS. And these devices are only getting smaller. Although GPS implants aren't currently available, it might be only a matter of time 
before every criminal, perhaps even every citizen, has an ID chip. Once the stuff of science fiction, these surveillance technologies are becoming reality. But the more amazing they get, the more controversies they create. In the name of security, societies around the world are struggling to redraw the line between surveillance and privacy. The bill before me will help law enforcement to identify, to dismantle, to disrupt, and to punish terrorists before they strike. Just months after the 9-11 attacks, President Bush secretly ordered the government to listen in on some Americans' phone calls without getting warrants. Technically, snooping on communications is not difficult. Almost every phone call, fax, and email passes through a network of towers and satellites. This digital data can be intercepted with listening dishes or by using spy satellites. The U.S. alone has more than 30,000 eavesdroppers scattered around the world, working with at least 100 spy satellites. Every three minutes, they collect enough information to fill the Library of Congress. Governments tell us these technologies make us safer. But where is it all leading? More than ever, authorities say we need surveillance in a dangerous and wired world. Even half a million cameras couldn't stop the London bombings. New technologies like ID implants Iris scans and facial recognition have the power to reveal anyone who has committed a crime or crossed a border illegally. But they also have the power to invade our privacy. In the future world of total surveillance, there may be nowhere to hide.